Hey folks, Marcus Beck here with the bottom tip. This week we're going to take a look at how we can handle translations in lit element based views. Now I'm going to use Vaadin Fusion for this, but the same set of instructions will work for any lit uh, element based project that uses Webpack. So let's create a project and see how we can do this. All right, so again, I'm going to use the Vaadin CLI to create a new Fusion project. So I'm going to run Vaadin in it. I'm going to call my project Fusion Fusion i18n, and we're going to use Fusion. And once that's done, we're going to CD into the project. We're going to open it with VS Code. And I'm going to start the Maven build process. So this will start both the backend build and the Webpack build all at the same time. All right, so while that's going on, let's rearrange our windows a little bit here so we have an easier time working with this. And uh, the project that I'm going to use or the library I'm going to use for translation is called Lit Translate. And it has a fairly involved or kind of in-depth readme file on how to do this. So we can follow along and I'll show you a couple of small differences that you need to make when you're using Webpack for uh, this to work. All right, so the first thing we need to do is install lit translate. So I'm going to open up a terminal and modern uses pnpm, but the uh, command will be otherwise the same here. So we're going to copy that and install lit translate. And once we have that installed, what we need to do next is define some translation files. So for that, I'm going to go into my front end folder, which is my lit uh, application. And I'm going to create a new folder here for all of those. So I'm going to call this i18n. And here we'll start creating new files with the form uh, language.json. So I'm going to start by creating a new en.json file. And let's keep this very simple. So we'll have a hello key which will be hello. And then we'll have a world key, which will be world like this. And then we'll translate this into a couple of languages. As you can see, you can have these nested structures as well. So if you want to have uh, kind of some structure, uh, maybe separating keys by views or components or whatever, that's fairly straightforward to, to set up using this. Now let's create another file here. So fi.json for finish. We'll say, hey, Myelma. And let's do one more new file. Swedish.json. Say, hey. Well done. All right. Good. So we'll save those. And now we have three different languages that we can work with. All right, so the next thing we need to do is register the translate configuration. So for that, I'm going to go into the index TypeScript file here and register this. So we're going to call register translate config. And this will take in a loader. Now you can see the loader right here uses fetch to uh, fetch these JSON files and then returns the resulting JSON. Now, when we're in a Webpack project, this is a little bit uh, problematic because uh, Webpack doesn't kind of do these fetches on build time. So it would never copy over these JSON files into our build directory so that they would be available to us when we're actually running the application. So essentially, we have two different ways we could go around this. One is using the copy Webpack plugin to just copy over this whole i18n folder. Or then we can use the dynamic import keyword and let Webpack create bundles for those JSON files for us and not have to uh, configure any other plugin. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to create a loader and just follow the same structure here. So we'll have a loader for a specific language. And instead of using fetch here, I'm going to use the import uh, method. And I'm going to fetch from i18n. And then 
the language dot json like this and then when that comes back what we get is the module and from the module we want to return the default export which will be the json content like this All right so this will more or less be functionally equivalent and uh, that way we're kind of using webpack to bundle up those json assets and fetch them whenever needed all right so next we need to define a default language so we'll call use with en so we can use uh, English as the default language here in our application like this and then we're able to start getting values now we're not gonna use the get uh, function directly instead we're gonna use the translate directive in our in our view so let's open up uh, the sidebar again and go into our views and to the hello world view here and I'll replace the whole template here with just a simple h1 and then we're interpolating in two values so we'll translate uh, sorry so we're not going to call this dot translate we're going to call translate and we're going to import that from lit translate and then we're going to pull in first of all hello uh, like that and then we're going to do the same thing again but we're going to translate world. So translate world like that. And now if we go into our application, we should see this. Now, the reason we're not seeing this is uh, I need to restart uh, the Webpack build process after uh, making that new dynamic import so that we actually get those uh, dynamic uh, module. So let me go back in here, restart Maven to restart the uh, the Webpack build process. So see that that starts working. We can go back into our app here. Hopefully uh, things will work now. There are still a couple of kind of small things that we're going to do or well Two things we're gonna add a selector for the language so that we can change it and then we're gonna take care of not displaying these kind of placeholder values as uh, before the actual content has been has been loaded now this is still not working for some reason so let's take a look at the network here um, so it doesn't seem like it's actually pulling in that language for some reason so let's go in here the reason is because I typoed the word default here. So let's try to type things correctly. And sure enough, that works. All right, so uh, let's first of all add a little selector here so we can change the language on the fly. So for that, we're gonna go into our main layout and just up here in the header, let's do a select with three option values. So we'll have EN for English, FI for Finnish, and then SV for Swedish. And then we need to bind this to a method. So on the change method, what we will do is call this dot change language. And then we need to create that method here. So change language. So we'll get an event. And uh, what we can do then is call uh, the same use from let translate and we'll get the e.target as a HTML select element and get the value from there. All right, so let's see if that works. So we have a selector here, we can select different values and we can see those reflect in our template. So that works. Now, if you're really kind of quick, you might notice that there's like a little flash here when 
the translations haven't loaded yet and it, we get those kind of square bracket placeholders so let's uh, do one last thing here to avoid that and that's also here in the uh, in the readme file so what we want to do is essentially put a guard expression for has loaded strings and use that to not call should update until or kind of block uh, the render until we have those in place uh, a very convenient place to put those in in Vaden is in the views file so if we go into our uh, sidebar here again we can open up the view file and this is kind of the base class for everything that we have so you can see that already extends uh, mobx lit element to uh, add in mobx functionality and then we have two base classes view and layout that both extend from that so let's create our own class in between so uh, let's call it a translatable component so uh, actually we don't need to export that so we'll do a class uh, translatable component extends mobx element let's actually call this element just to be consistent all right and what i want to do here is first of all we need to have a state for the has loaded strings so we'll import state no not static range state and this will be a this can be private uh has loaded strings is equal to false all right we need to import this for some reason that's not working so let's do that the old-fashioned way import state from what element all right so we have state there and then we want to up uh, override this should update so should update and it will take in the change properties I'm just gonna call this uh, or use the any type for this just being lazy right now and we need to uh, return essentially check if this dot has loaded strings and super dot should update with those change properties essentially just appending this check for uh, loaded strings All right and uh, then we want to uh, override the connected callback here you can see that it's using an async function for overriding that and it's usually a good way to do it but the problem is I've overridden that in the kind of next level as well and the problem is that if I make this an async function the method signatures wouldn't uh, actually match so what I'll do instead is just use the basic promise API so I'll override connected callback and then I'll call super.connected callback and then I'll call use with en so we're going to use english by default and then we when the that uh, promise resolves we're going to set this dot has loaded strings to true like this All right so then We'll copy this and extend both view and layout from that instead. So now we have this class in between that should hopefully take care of not displaying the text until we actually have the translations in place. So now if you see, we don't get that flash of, flash of the placeholders in between. All right, so that's it for translating lit element based applications. If you have any questions, please ask them below. If you have ideas for new videos, let me know. Uh, be sure to subscribe for new videos and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye